Welcome back to Aurora Tech Channel. Today, I will be reviewing the Xtool P2 55W CO2 laser engraver. Like other Xtool machines, this engraver has an attractive appearance, solid build quality, and a premium price tag ranging from $4,000 to $5,000. Let's take a closer look at what you can expect from this premium laser engraver. The machine comes with a uniquely designed enclosure made of rigid plastic unlike other industrial style CO2 machines that are typically made of metal. The total weight of the machine is over 100 pounds. The laser tube is a 55 watt CO2 tube with a built-in air assist and it has an internal cooling system with a coolant tank located at the back of the machine, eliminating the need for buckets of water and an aquarium pump for water cooling. The motion system is the same as other X-Tool machines, using steel wheels instead of linear rails like on other industrial machines. The top speed is 600 mm per second or 36K per minute. It is equipped with two 16 megapixel cameras, one wide angle for general use and another that moves with the tool head for pinpoint accurate alignment. The Z-axis has its own stepper motor, allowing the machine to automatically detect the height of materials and work on curved surfaces. The bed size is 26 by 14 inches, and instead of a regular honeycomb bed, it comes with removable metal slats that can be adjusted to provide cleaner cuts. An optional riser base is also available, which allows you to work with thicker materials up to 8.4 inches or 215 millimeters, as well as longer materials such as a whole shade of plywood without needing to cut it down to fit the bed size. Another optional accessory is the auto pass-through feeder, which can automatically feed longer materials along the Y-axis, letting you work on one piece long jobs up to 118 inches in length. The machine comes with an exhaust fan and ducting for smoke extraction, and its software is Xtool Creative Space. While Lightburn is also compatible, some features like the dual camera and auto material detect will not be supported. Overall, the hardware specs and features of the Xtool CO2 engraver are impressive. I would like to thank Xtool for sending this machine to me to review, and with that, let's get started. The machine comes in one piece, so there is no assembly required. However, it was not easy for us to move it from the box to the table as it weighs over 100 pounds. Let's take a look at what's inside. In addition to the machine, we have some sample materials, tools, cables, a manual, a fan duct, a funnel, and a bottle of antifreeze coolant. Since the coolant was drained to prevent leakage during shipping, we need to open the back of the machine We will find the coolant tank, CO2 tube, and a silicone protector. To prepare the machine for use, you need to open the cap of the tank and mix the antifreeze coolant with distilled water at a ratio appropriate to your local temperature. In my case, I used around 200 milliliters of antifreeze coolant and 800 milliliters of water, after connecting my own ducting to exhaust the air outside, I will turn on the machine. Xtool recommends calibrating the laser path as the lens may have moved during shipping. This can be done by adjusting the screws on the lens to move it until the laser dot is in the dead center. But my machine was pre-adjusted quite well and didn't seem to be off from the center when I did the test, so I didn't need to make any adjustments. As I already own other Xtool machines, I have the Xtool Creative Space software installed on my computer. Nevertheless, I will update it to the latest version along with the machine firmware. Let's start with the cutting test using the 3mm bass width that came with the machine. I will run the same file that you saw on Xtool's website to see if the cutting power is in line with the expected results. The camera will capture the bed and show it in the software. As this job doesn't require pinpoint accuracy, I will roughly place it here. I will use the accuracy feature to measure the thickness of the wood, which shows it to be 2.7 millimeters, so I think it should be accurate enough. We can now send the job to the machine over Wi-Fi. For some reason, the sample file from Xtool works pretty randomly. It engraves some text, does some cutting, and then goes back to engraving. 
This is a bit weird, but I will let it finish anyways. The job was done in less than 8 minutes, and the machine cover is locked for around 10 seconds after the job is finished. Let's open it and see the result. It's not far from the result shown on their website. Some circles look like they've been completely cut out, but as I haven't touched the board yet, they're just hanging in place. I will give them a little push and see how many of them were completely cut through. For those cut at 35mm per second or slower, they were cut through completely but for those cut at 40 millimeters per second or faster, they weren't. I have to give them a snap to break them away from the connected parts. The result is in line with their factory test, and the cuts are also clean due to the built-in air assist. Next, I will test some 5 millimeter plywood. This is leftover wood from a 2x4 foot plywood sheet I used for previous projects. This time, I will use Lightburn to run a standard cutting test. As Lightburn doesn't support auto material height detection, I will manually enter the Z offset so that the stepper motor on the tool head can move close enough to set the correct focal length. I will cut this 5mm plywood from 10 to 50mm per second with different power levels. Do a preview, and we can now send the job over the USB cable. Lightburn will start engraving, then start cutting with the slowest speed, and move all the way up to 50mm per second. The result seems pretty good. It can cut through this 5mm plywood as quickly as 50mm per second or 3000mm per minute at a power of 80% or higher, which is quite impressive. Then I will go back to the Xtool software, capture an image of the material, and draw a rectangle to cut it out. As I want to cut right above the pass 1 text and include the power text, I will use the second camera which comes with a standard lens instead of a wide angle. It is installed on the print head, and it will fly to the area you selected to capture a close-up view for better alignment. Okay, let's cut it at 40mm per second at 100% power, and in a single pass. For simple straight lines like this, it should be fine. I can still gently push it out as it's 99% cut through, but I guess using 30mm per second would still be better. Next, I will use another leftover 5mm plywood sheet to cut some discs. This design is from my friend Andre, and if you're interested in his design, I put his Etsy store Smart Feature Models under the description. I think I can make 5 of these on this plywood. This time, I will use 30mm per second at 80% power and in a single pass. However, something weird happened as it ran two passes on everything. Generally, if I set it to two passes, it will finish everything and run another pass, but it seems it just cut everything twice. I will let it finish and then check what's wrong. All the discs were finished pretty nicely with clean cuts, even though it ran two passes, which was not what I expected. When I looked into the files, I found that the files were overlapping, which means it had two lines on every shape, which explains why the machine ran two passes on everything. I will now make a larger one with another plywood sheet, and this time, I will remove the overlapping layers before sending the job to the machine.
This time, everything looks normal, and it took less than three minutes to finish the job. The surface is fairly clean, though not super clean, but the back of the wood is much cleaner. I removed some of the metal slats underneath so that the wood was supported at just two ends, and I will use the remaining area of the wood to cut out a stand for this disc. The job was completed in around 40 seconds. As you can see, the CO2 laser is really good at cutting. Then, I would try to do multiple operations in a single job to make a Batman logo. First, I will cut out the bat in the middle. I will use the engrave mode to engrave the oval, and finally, draw another oval to cut out the whole thing. The engraving took more than 25 minutes, but the bat and the oval combined took around one minute. The job finished in 26 minutes total. After that, I would try some photo engraving using the 3mm sample basswood. This actually looks like plywood to me, and I don't know what exactly the difference is, but I will just call it basswood. I will start with 150mm per second, or 9000mm per minute, at 10% power. The job took 46 minutes, and I think it's a bit too light, so I will double the speed to 300 millimeters per second or 18,000 millimeters per minute at 25% power. It took 26 minutes, and it looks a bit darker, but I'd still prefer an even darker image, so I will try 400 millimeters per second or 24,000 millimeters per minute and 40% power. This time, it took 21 minutes, and it's pretty close to what I prefer. I will use the same speed but reduce the power to 20% and engrave another one on an MDF sheet. It also looks good, but not as good as the 40% power one engraved on basswood. Let's compare all four of them. Personally, I still like the 400mm per second 40% power on plywood more because the details are so clear. Next, I will test some thick oak wood. I used this wood for a CNC test a few weeks ago, and I will now run a simple cutting test on it. I will start with 3mm per second, or 180mm per minute, with the 100% power to cut a straight line. It cuts through completely, and the edges are all clean. I will then make a Harry Potter logo and engrave at 250mm per second at 50% power. I prefer the lines to be a little darker, so I'll just run another pass. After that, I will cut it out using the same 3mm per second or 180mm per minute speed and 100% power. Unfortunately, it didn't cut through completely on one side. Normally, when we remove the workpiece, it's very difficult to align it to run another pass, especially for something with these complex cutouts. But this would be a good alignment test for the second camera. I will use it to do a close-up shot and move the line as close to the current outline as possible. It looks like the alignment is very accurate. 
It completely cut through this time, and although the wood burned a little bit more than I prefer, it still saved the workpiece with the help of the second camera. For the stand-on machine, or if the material is too long to fit in the working area, the stock setup can't be used, so I will try the riser base. As I really don't want to move this 100 pound machine again, I will just let my brother and dad do the work. Okay, the movers are gone and I'm back now. I will try a whole sheet of plywood from Home Depot. It has a pretty standard size of 2 by 4 feet and the thickness is 5 millimeters. Let's refresh the camera. I will try to make some drawers on this large piece of plywood, starting with the front and back. This job took just 59 seconds, and when adding the 10 second door lockup time, it took 1 minute and 9 seconds. The cut is clean, so I can do the rest of the pieces. The total time for the entire box is just around 5 minutes. I put it on an Ender 3 so you can see how large it is. The original design has 4 drawers and also requires a large box to hold them all, but I don't have enough plywood so I will just make one for now. Then I will try to engrave a slate. I will still use the second close-up camera so I can better position the logo on the slate. Xtool has a material reference table, so I would just follow what they recommend and use a speed of 150mm per second at 20% power to engrave this logo. The result looks awesome, and the alignment is very good considering that I made the logo almost the same as the slate. Without the second camera, it would be very challenging to perfectly align something like this. After that, I would try to engrave on a thin metal card. When I do the preview, there's a problem as the card is black and the inside of the machine is also black, so I can't see it. To fix this, I put a piece of plywood underneath so I can position it more easily. I will use a speed of 200 millimeters per second at 20% power and see how it looks. It actually burned off the coating on the metal sheet and the result looks pretty good. Finally, I will try some clear acrylic engraving and cutting as one of the biggest advantages of a CO2 laser is being able to work on clear acrylic, which can't be done on a diode laser. I will engrave the same Harry Potter logo from before using a speed of 200mm per second at 20% power and cut it out using a speed of 20mm per second at 100% power. The result is awesome. The engraving is clear and the cut is clean. 
Okay, after doing quite a lot of tests, let's talk about the pros and cons of this machine, starting with the pros. 1. This machine has a premium build. The appearance, weight, and details inside the machine are awesome. Unlike many industrial CO2 machines and smart engraving machines, every detail is well polished, the whole thing just looks really nice. 2. When using the Xtool Creative Space software, the machine is locked while it's operating and there's no way to open it, kind of like a washing machine in use. This safety feature makes it suitable for use at home or even in a classroom. 3. The dual cameras work great. With the second close-up camera installed right on the tool head, it can quickly move to the area you want to zoom in on, and the alignment won't be affected by the wide-angle lens commonly used on other smart laser engravers. 4. The cutting power is strong. I recently tested another smart laser engraver, the Gwake Cloud, which is a 50-watt laser. Although I didn't expect there to be much of a difference, this 55-watt laser can definitely cut thicker wood and has an overall faster cutting speed. It can cut a 5mm plywood sheet at 35mm per second or over 2,000mm per minute, which is super useful when you want to make something large. 5. The riser base works well, and it lets me use a whole 2x4 foot plywood sheet from Home Depot. With it, you can just grab any available sheet of wood and throw it into the machine. It saves so much time as you don't have to cut it down to fit into the bed. 6. The Xtool Creative Space integrates the dual camera and Wi-Fi features flawlessly, and I can just use it without using Lightburn. I did all the tests in this video with the Xtool software, except for the Lightburn cutting test. The Xtool software can now run multiple operations like different types, speeds, and powers of engraving and cutting in one job. Of course, if you want some more advanced features, Lightburn is still the way to go, but its complex user interface may make it challenging for beginners to start with. Now for the cons. 1. This is undoubtedly a premium machine, and its price tag really reflects that. While you can find an industrial 100 watt CO2 machine with a larger working area for around $5,000, you would need to be proficient in using Lightburn and purchase a $120 DSP license to work with most CO2 controllers. However, for someone willing to invest $5,000 in a machine, the cost of the $120 DSP Lightburn license is likely not too big of an issue. This machine is also $1,000 more expensive than other smart engravers, such as the Quake Cloud, but this Xtool P2 does have a higher build quality. 2. Generally, I would expect to see linear rails on this kind of CO2 laser machine, but the motion system uses the same steel wheels as those on the Xtool D1 Pro. I haven't seen any issues caused by this, but personally, if it had thicker 16mm linear rails, I would be happier to pay the high price. 3. The Xtool software is not fully ready for the features of this new machine, like how the curved object engraving feature is not available. Unlike when working with the D1 Pro and M1, the software does not have all the parameters ready for common materials. When working with this new machine, the preset material parameters are missing, so you have to refer to the reference table and enter everything manually. However, I believe that when Xtool is ready to ship these machines out in May, these features will probably be available. Nevertheless, it also lacks other features like setting the order of multiple operations in a job. For example, if you want to engrave first and then cut, unless you create the operations in the correct order, there is no way to adjust it. 4. The built-in air assist is strong, but when cutting lines with a tight distance, I found that the result is better on a diode laser with a strong air assist pump. This may be because the CO2 laser beam is larger. When I compared the beam size of this machine to the Xtool D1 Pro, it was actually 3.75 times larger. That explains why I feel like the edges are not as clean compared to the D1 Pro when cutting tiny lines in close proximity to one another. In conclusion, this is the easiest to use and highest quality built laser machine that I have ever tested. The 55 watt cutting power is strong and it cuts quickly, and the machine offers advanced features that set it apart from its competitors. 
Unfortunately, the auto pass-through feeder is currently out of stock, and the curved engraving feature is not yet available in the Xtool software. These were two major highlights of this machine that I was hoping to try. In my opinion, the major downside is still the high price, but if budget is not a primary concern for you, this is probably the best consumer-grade CO2 machine on the market. If you are interested in the Xtool P2, I have included the link below in the description. That's all I wanted to share about this machine. If you found this video useful, please consider giving us a like and subscribing to our channel. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.